Hello, fellow overcomers. Hey, welcome back to the I Am Podcast. Welcome back to Identity School. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before we uh, continue on from the previous episode, just want to remind you, just want to remind you uh, to, to stay connected with me as far as the goings on of Overcomers Media and of uh, Identity School and of the Blessing School of Pakistan. Hallelujah. Please say continue with me. Uh, please continue to pray as the Holy Spirit leads. Hallelujah. If it's on your heart to, 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 to uh, support this outreach financially, do so. And, um, you know, let's pray for, for the return of Overcomers TV also. Assuming that when you're listening to this, Overcomers TV hasn't already returned on the air. Hallelujah. If it's already back on the air, then by all means, contact me to see how you could become a guest on the, uh, on the broadcast. Hallelujah. 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 Well, class is now in session. Praise the Lord. Um, let's go back into uh, 1 Corinthians 13. Verse 6. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 6. Now we've been, we've done an exhaustive introduction of love, which would be the God kind of love, which since God is love and we are his children, that means we have his DNA. That means that we are children of love. And that means that if that if God lives inside of us, then love lives inside of us. So it's not a matter of wanting to get love. It's a matter of learning how to function in love. It's learning that you are a love child of a love God. And it is learning how to behave accordingly. Hallelujah. So when you know when we see when we see in these previous verses how love endures long and is patient and kind, for instance, people pray for patience. I That's not the correct prayer. If you want to get technical, which I do want to get technical, because words mean things. To pray for patience would imply that you don't have patience, which would imply... That you need to receive patience. But. What you really need to receive. If you perceive that you're lacking in patience. What you really need to receive. Is a revelation. On how to operate in patience. It may be a revelation of what patience is. And a revelation on how to. Behave. In a patient manner. Because you are already patient. If Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, if, if, if the Most High God is your Father, then you are already patient. You already endure. You already are humble. Okay? Now, that's the purpose of identity school, is learning who and what we are. And then, from that, we learn how to behave accordingly. But, as far as this patient, I just happened to throw out verse 4, because... We have already done an introductory episode on patience, on kindness. We've already done the episode. We've already done the patient expression, the kind expression. So if you have not heard that, or if you just want to brush up on it, hear it again, wherever you are listening or watching this podcast, by all means, go back. Go back and hear it again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, right now, we are still on verse 6 of 1 Corinthians 13. It does not rejoice in injustice and unrighteousness. It, referring to love. It does not rejoice in injustice and unrighteousness, righteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Now, 
when we've been uh, doing a somewhat detailed introduc introduction of of uh, the characteristic traits of love, instead of going to the original Hebrew or Aramaic or Greek, we went to the current Merriam-Webster's Dictionary on the app. That's what we've done. Because after all, this is by this by, by you know the the tongue that I learned, American English, not even the King's English, not even English from across the pond. English, American English, American English with how how it uh break how it continually breaks the rules and all that stuff. You know that English, Hallelujah, sets rules for grammars and have exceptions. Wow. Yeah, you know. Uh, anyway, anyway, let's let's not go down that rabbit trail. All right, but re the love does not rejoice in the injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Right now, when it says right, I would infer that based on the first half of that sentence. That right would be the opposite of unright. So we could read that as love rejoices when right and truth prevail. Hallelujah. Now, in the previous episode uh, titled The Joyful Expression, the Holy Ghost had me focus on rejoice. The Holy Ghost had me focusing on rejoicing. Because love rejoices. And whether you've heard it or not, I would highly recommend we go back and uh, listen to that again. Because the fact that love rejoices seems to be lost to too many of the brethren. That fact seems to be lost on too many of the brethren. Just like patience and kindness seems to be lost sometimes sometimes jealousy seems you know seems to be lost you know um not taking account of evil done to it not paying attention to suffer you know suffer wrong well anyway love rejoices hallelujah but it doesn't rejoice at everything clearly it doesn't rejoice at injustice or unrighteousness now when you hear about injustice. Injustice would obviously be the opposite of justice. But normally, you hear when you hear injustice, you think of a courtroom. Okay? You think of a violation of the law. Okay? You think of a wrong verdict rendered you think of let's see what else would you think of you think of people who took an oath Pe people who took an oath to uphold the constitution of the united states to uphold the state the various state constitutions okay or you know in any in anything or Hey, even people who uh, who 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 have uh, expressed dedication to upholding the uh, word of God. All right, when you think of them abusing their positions of power and privilege and making laws or rendering verdicts that clearly violate said body he said body of law said system that they swore to uphold that they're responsible for enforcing that's what people tend to think about when they hear the word justice or injustice as a matter of fact the mirror webster dictionary it said you know it's a very simple definition of the noun all right very simple definition. Um, the absence of justice 
violation of right or the rights of another. A synonym of that would be unfairness. And then the other part of that definition would be an unjust act or a synonym that would be wrong. Now, do we really need a do we really need a podcast or a, a, a chapter or a, or a chapter of the syllabus or you know a, a, you know a sermon or a dissertation? Do we really need a, do we really need all that to know that God hates when things aren't righteous or things aren't just? You would think so. You would think so. However, we as children of the Most High God are responsible for expression, expressing the image of God in a fallen world. Okay? And, you know, it is serious when we do things that are unjust, okay? When we do things that aren't true all right we don't operate in truth we do things that are contrary to the laws of god and the laws of man when we do those things and they and they know that we're professing to be believers that's a problem that's confusion it's like well maybe god is happy that i'm in this situation maybe it's the will of god that you know, maybe it's the will of God that so and so gets away with crimes of all manners. Maybe that's just the way it is. Ah, bah, 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 bah. Well, could it be? Could it be that it's the way it is? Is because the children of God have you know have not collectively pressed in to enforce justice. Hallelujah. Could that be? Is it possible that we, and I'm, I can only refer to the states, all right? And not everybody in the states, but it seems like it happens too often. Could it be, wow, could it be that we have not as children of God, really honed in to hate and evil, or could, well, hey, it maybe it could be a matter of boldness, all right? But I'm going to go back a little bit to the fact that, you know, what love rejoices at and what love does not rejoice at. Hallelujah. 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 In every fiber of the deity of the be of the being of deity, it hates injustice and unrighteousness, and rejoices when right and truth prevail. Hallelujah! When truth win wins out, praise the Lord. Now, once again, we hear this and we're thinking about yeah. You know, love rejoices when when people are abiding by. The laws of the land. But love rejoices when people are abiding by the scriptural laws. Love rejoices when people are abiding by moral laws. All right. Now, let me throw something out here. Let me throw something out here. Somebody's sick. All right. Somebody is sick. Now, Jesus took that sickness up on the cross, didn't he? All right. In 1 Peter 2, 24, it says, By whom stripes we are healed. Now, if we are tolerant of sickness, that is unjust and unrighteous. Sickness is unjust and unrighteous. Why unrighteous? Well, righteousness is right standing with God. Okay? Sickness is not in right standing with God. Sickness is part of the curse. Messiah redeemed us from the curse of the law. He became the curse for us. He bore our sicknesses. 
He bore our griefs. By his stripes we were healed. He took out our wounds and our sorrows. All right? Should we be, yo, know, we should be rejoicing when people get healed. But the fact that it does not rejoice in injustice or righteousness, all right, not rejoicing at something is different from being indifferent about it. Okay? It's become even clearer now. The Holy Spirit just pointed out to me as I am speaking that we needed to really focus on, he had me really talk and emphasize that love rejoices. Because if we know that love rejoices and we know what love rejoices at, then that means that when we see something that is not worthy of rejoicing, then we won't rejoice at it. Then we won't be indifferent about it. Then maybe we'll get some righteous, you know, some holy boldness and some righteous anger and do something about it. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. God wants the best for everybody. We'll learn that. Lord willing, we'll learn that in, in uh, upcoming episodes of the I Am Podcast. But we rejoice when we see righteousness, when we see justice, when we see truth prevail, we rejoice. So what is justice? Oh, wow. What is justice? Let's go back. Justice is the opposite of injustice. Well, I mean, there's different definitions. Justice being a noun says the maintenance or administration of what is just, especially by the impartial adjustment of conflicting claims or the assignment of merited rewards or punishments. Hallelujah. The administration of a law, especially the establishment or determination of rights according to the rules of law or equity, the quality of being just, impartial, or fair. Conformity to truth, fact, or reason. The quality of conforming to the law. Conform conformity to this principle or ideal, as in righteousness. All right? Now, a justice actually could be a judge of an appellate court or court of last resort as a Supreme Court. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, now it seems like I need to look up uh, the word just, huh? All right. Just as an adjective, having a basis in or conforming to fact or reason. Conforming to a standard of correctness. So reasonable and proper are also mm, synonyms. An archaic definition would be faithful to an original. Here, how about this? Acting or being in conformity with what is morally upright or good. Being what is merited, legally correct. Okay. So, just as an adjective, that's what this be. So, really, just as it seems like it's uh, uh, synonymous with righteousness. As a matter of fact, in... Uh, in Habakkuk, the Lord told Habakkuk that Habakkuk that the just shall live by faith. And in other translations, I believe that it that that it's rendered righteous. The righteous shall live by faith. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So what would justice be? Perhaps in this manner, wouldn't justice be the perfect will of God for all of mankind and for each individual person. So, if we call that justice, 
then obviously God would not rejoice when that isn't happening. So therefore, we shouldn't be rejoicing when that's happening. And I'm not just talking about man's law. We're really talking about God's law here. And today, God's law is love him with all your heart, mind, body, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. God's law today is the law of love. When you fulfill the law of love, you fulfill all the laws. You can't disobey any law if you fulfill the law of love. You know, treat others the way you want to be treated. When you see somebody wronged, that's not funny. I don't care if you love that person or not. I don't care if you love that person or not. When you see someone wronged, it's not funny. It's not hilarious. And here's something else too. Justice is justice, okay? You know, and when we hear that, we hear like the strict letter of the law. But you realize in James, in the letter James wrote, he said that mercy triumphs over justice. You realize that? Our father is a merciful father. And I believe that the younger brother of Jesus, the oldest younger brother of Jesus, James, I believe he got a revelation on something about mercy triumphing over justice. I believe he got a revelation on the grace of God like King David did, like the Apostle Paul did, like, you know, like the apostles did, the early church. I believe that something can go along, can, can be done according to the letter of the law. But if there's no love applied to it, there's no mercy in there that God's not rejoicing. So we need to not rejoice at something that's the opposite of mercy. Praise the Lord. Could we say that the mercy of God is a higher form of justice, is a more divine form of justice. If we were to look up mercy in the Merriam Webster dictionary, we would see as, as a noun compassion or forbearance shown especially to an offender or to, or to one subject to one's power, also lenient or compassionate treatment. Another Another definition, imprisonment rather than death. Oh, as a first degree murder. Okay. So, in other words, somebody is convicted of first degree murder. If the opportunity is there for a death penalty and they get life in prison instead, well, that's mercy shown upon them. Well, come to think of it, if the, if the law of, of the state is no death penalty, well, that's the... That mercy has been codified in, 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 already. But here, like definition two of the word mercy. A blessing that is an act of divine favor or compassion. May God have mercy on us. Well, God has mercy on us already. He showed, it when he showed us when he sent us Jesus. Hallelujah. Said hallelujah. If that's... If that's not the divine act of mercy, I don't know what is. All right. Maybe, maybe we need, we, we need a revelation of what mercy is if we don't understand that that's the divine act of mercy. And that definitely is something to rejoice on. So, wow. In other words, this kind of accentuates uh, the previous verse where it takes no account. Love doesn't take does not take an account of the evil done to it. It pays all attention to a suffered wrong. In other words, love forgives. 
No forgives. And you want to get on God's bad side. A quick way to get on God's bad side would be to not forgive sin. Because that is totally opposite of the nature of our Heavenly Father. Which means it's antithesis to love. Because God is love. Hallelujah. So what does love rejoice at? Love rejoices at, at the mercies of God um, manifesting. It rejoices when God's perfect, perfect law comes to pass. It rejoices when, you know, people who are suffering as a result of rights being denied, unjustly denied, that they get that they get those rights restored. And I'm talking in, in, in the spiritual realm as well as the phys, as well as, as the physical realm. That's what love rejoices at. And anything that's not that, then we have no business rejoicing in that. Then we definitely need the Holy Spirit to, to work on us. Hallelujah. We definitely need the Holy Spirit then to, to shine the light on us and let her reveal to us some wisdom. And, you know, because love is compassionate. Oh, love can be firm, but it, it, love is compassionate and 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 our Messiah in the in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's is an excellent, the go-to example of how, how, you know, of how how we are to be compassionate, operate in compassion, and yet maintain our convictions. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. All right. Well, that's enough for me right here. Praise the Lord. Don't forget, you know, you know, pray and find out how you can support the Blessing School of Pakistan so that the children over there can get the education to go out into the world and to succeed out into the world. And yet they're not subject to, uh, you know, they're not subject to, uh, uh, I'll use the word indoctrination. Indoctrination is not a bad word. It's only bad. It's only what the what the indoctrination is going to is where when it gets bad. Um, it, it is a way for 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 parents to uh, to uh, continue to raise their children in, in the fear and admonition of the Lord without opposition from the school system. And who knows? And I'm talking to my I'm talking I'm talking to my to, to, to my family in the United States of America. Who knows? Maybe your 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 prayers for Pakistan and the education system, maybe your financial support in this matter, perhaps that could be the seed right there that gives the Holy Spirit it gives the Holy Spirit permission to move the way the way she really wants to. Okay? That could be. Who knows? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But even if that's not the case, even if we don't understand all that or don't agree with all that, that's still our family. That's still our family. Hallelujah. And stay connected with me, will you? Stay connected with me. Um, I'm on the social media platforms, Overcomers Media. Um, if you haven't uh, uh, got caught up on all the episodes, you know, do the binge thing. All right. Hallelujah. And if identity school is in session, if identity school is open and classes are going already, join. If it isn't yet, well, Pray that I get that that this that, that we get this established like right now, all right? Because I don't know when you listen to this. Hallelujah. Well, that's enough for me. That is enough for me. All right. Well, hey, I love you. I'm Jubilee James, the Overcomer, brother. I will return to you at the appointed time. Class is now dismissed. <laughs>